So this evening we're talking Japanese cooking, and we're very lucky to have Kimiko Barber um, is launching her new book. And um, this is actually Kimiko's eighth cookery book, and I'm assuming they're all about Japanese mm-hmm. cooking. Is that correct? So I think it can be said that um, she is one of the reasons behind the growing popularity of Japanese food in this country. Uh, <laughs> and um, I, you know, I haven't read the book or, or tried to cook any of it yet, but um, Kimiko will explain it to us. But one thing that I did hear about it is that um, it partly deals with the issue of what you do if you can't find the proper Japanese ingredients um, in the UK, you know, perhaps some, some ideas for what you can substitute to have the same kind of effect. And uh, we have some copies of the book downstairs, and they are £20 each, so you're welcome to buy them. And we even, I think, have a credit card machine for a change, if you don't have the cash. Um, but on that note, I'll pass over to, to you. Thank you very much, Um, good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, very welcome. Thank you very much for coming. <coughs> um, right. Um, what I wish to say is actually um, in the title of my book, Cook Japanese at Home. As a Japanese-born food writer and a cookery teacher, I have always encouraged people to cook preferably Japanese food, because that's the cuisine kept me, and later my family... (coughs) Sorry, excuse me, do you mind speaking to my a bit louder, because I can't quite hear you. You can't hear. Yeah, please, thank you. Okay, sorry. (coughs) Can you hear me now? Much better. (laughs) Sorry. Okay, as a Japanese-born food writer and a cookery teacher, I have always encouraged people to cook preferably Japanese food, because that's the food that kept me, and later my family, (coughs) happy and healthy. Cooking at home puts you in control, the control of what and how you eat, and that ultimately puts you in charge of your health and well-being. Japanese food has gained worldwide popularity, and is now firmly in the mainstream. However, despite the war the rave, Japanese food hasn't quite made it into home kitchens yet. And and it seems to be regarded something of a mystery, too difficult perhaps, or too foreign. I'm hoping to change all that with my book. However, in this talk, I am not going to tell you um, how to cook. Japanese food, because that's all explained in my book, <laughs> okay, which I hope you're going to buy. And, um, but instead, what I would like to do is tell you the story of my country's food and culture. Because um, although it's regarded as uh, foreign or too difficult, whatever, it's actually um, <coughs> The Japanese food is largely made up <coughs> by what was originally foreign and been, which has been adopted and, and refined <coughs> and made it into Japanese. I arrived in England uh, to attend boarding school in the early 1970s and found the food scene very grim. <laughs> uh, yeah. and my first and probably the worst moment was when I came face to face with a rice pudding on the third day at school. Can you imagine? <laughs> oh boy, did I rea- realize a massive food cultural gap and regretted for not having paid more attention to my mother's and three grandmothers cooking. In those days, there were only a handful of Japanese restaurants in London that seems to cater uh, for homesick Japanese tourist or a lonely businessman. Today, there are over 200 Japanese restaurants in central London alone, 
um, including um, two coveted Michelin starred ones, many of which require days, if not a week's advance bookings. Sushi lunchbox are sold next to sandwiches, and the Japanese ingredients are becoming uh, easier to find in supermarkets. How things have changed, for the better, of course. The Japanese food has not only gained worldwide popularity, but also often cited as an example of a very healthy diet. It is well known that Japan has one of the highest average life expectancies for both men and women. And although it's on, sadly on the rising trend, both child and adult obesity rates are still well below 5% compared to that of Britain, where two-thirds of adults and a quarter of children are either overweight or obese. In 2013, the Japanese cuisine was added to the UNESCO's cultural heritage list, only the second after the French food to be given such honor. Washoku. Washoku, <coughs> the Japanese food, is written in two kanji characters, as you can see. The first character, wa, <coughs> refers to Japan and all things Japanese. And the second, shoku, um, <coughs> means food or to eat. The term was coined around the time of the Meiji Restoration in 1868, when Japan emerged from the over 200 years of self-imposed isolation and began embracing all things from the West, and the food was no exception. Washoku is inextricably linked to Japan's natural conditions, geography, climate, and as well as long history. Japanese archipelago <coughs> lays northeastern offshore of the Eurasia continent, stretching over 3,000 kilometers north to south, and it's composed of four large islands, Hokkaido, Honshu, Shikoku, and Kyushu, and with <coughs> some uh, 35,000 smaller islands around them. The climate ranges from subtropical in Okinawa, warm temperate in the south, to cool temperate in the north, and subarctic in Hokkaido. The land is 70% mountainous or forested, and a population of 127 million is crammed into an area half the size of France. To make it even more crowded, uh, over 40% of the population is <coughs> uh, squeezed into just three major coastal metropolises. Tokyo, Nagoya, and Osaka, and only 12% of land is used for agriculture. Adapting to challenging condition, living conditions, maintaining psychological personal space rather than the physical distance from each other, and abiding by carefully prescribed rules of behavior had been a traditionally accepted way of dealing with life in a land where overcrowding and devastating earthquakes, typhoons, volcanic eruptions, and the landslides are common. In such an environment, permanence is a difficult quality to achieve, and indeed seldom sought. Instead, Japanese people have learned to adjust and to esteem for the fle uh, to the fleeting moments <coughs> of being in balance with the nature. The desire to be in tune with the nature is the key to understanding Japanese food and indeed the country and its people. It is no coincidence the first character of Washoku, wa, <coughs> um, means Japanese, uh, Japan and Japanese, <coughs> but as well as it means peace, harmony, balance, and mildness. It's quite a useful character, actually, multitasking. <laughs> and both Japanese professional and home cooks 
strive to draw out <coughs> um, draw out a pure and simple natural taste and flavors rather than adding or imposing complicated man-made taste. This is because the Japanese believe that nature knows best. Using a mathematical term, it can be said that the Japanese cooking is rather like subtractions, taking away all the un unnecessary taste and leaving just the very essence of natural ingredient. Furthermore, every natural ingredient has its best moment, and we call it shun. And shun, a point of time where a particular food isn't at its best. And the nearest tr English translation is season, but it's not quite. Um, <coughs> but shun can last uh, several weeks or even months long, or it can be as fleeting as just a few days. It starts with hashiri, forerunner. Gourmets and high-class restaurants <coughs> compete to get the season's first offerings. And it ends with nagori. It's like a prolonged goodbye to a dear old friend for another year. Nowadays, the concept of being in tune with nature by cooking <coughs> and eating fresh nut seasonal food is not easy to practice when a whole range of fruit and vegetables are available nearly all year round. The sense of season has become somewhat blurred, but perhaps you can try to be in tune with nature by just <coughs> a few items that are locally produced. Japanese desire to be in tune with nature doesn't stop at just cooking, but extends to the, the way food is presented in seasonally um, appropriate tableware, um, perhaps pale pastel uh, dishes, colored dishes in the spring, and cool glass <coughs> and bowls in summer, and rustic bamboo um, basket in autumn, and warm earthen pottery in winter. The diversity of <coughs> Japan's geography and climate <coughs> results in the regional cuisines which are as varied as the land itself. The Hokkaido is the least Japan-like, with open, wide open space and lakes and mountains, is less conducive to rice cultivation. And so instead, the land is used for growing uh, corn and potatoes, uh, as well as for stock and dairy farming. And its regional specialities in <coughs> include crabs, scallops and salmon, as well as kombu, um, the seaweed, uh, which is an essential uh, ingredient for making dashi, the Japanese stock. And there is a huge food um, divide between the people <coughs> in Kanto region, uh, which is centered around Tokyo, and the Kansai uh, around Kyoto and Osaka. In Kansai, uh, seasoning is milder, both in color and in taste especially in Kyoto cuisine, with its delicate and utmost sophistication, stemming from the, its position as the site of the ancient imperial court. There is an unspoken uh, notion among the people in Kansai that the Kanto uh, are a bit rather heavy-handed with a certain uh, soy sauce and little lacking in refinement. Anyway, that's what at least my, one of my grandmothers told me, and she lived in Kyoto. <laughs> uh, anyway, Nagoya, <coughs> the third largest city, located halfway between Tokyo and Osaka, and the birthplace of Toyota and Pachinko, is renowned for the flat kishimen noodles, chickens and tamari sauce and soy sauce, and pure soybean hacho miso paste. In Shikoku Islands, one can expect to enjoy a wide range of fish and seafood from both the Inland Sea and the Pacific Ocean. But my abiding childhood memory <coughs> is watching one of my grand three grandmothers. I know uh, most people have three, I'm sorry, two, but I've got three. Um, <coughs> 
the grandma's offering the pilgrims who are visiting 88 sacred places around the island her delicious homemade um, sanuki wudon noodles. <clears throat> and Kyushu is famous for its tea, sweet potatoes, and for its Chinese and Western influences that derived, developed from Nagasaki's <clears throat> role as a Japan single trading post during the isolation period. On the island of Okinawa, septuagenarians are considered mere youngsters, and its cuisine features um, pork, bitter melon, and many other subtropical fruits and vegetables. What also distinct, uh, makes the Japanese food seem so foreign and or maybe difficult, maybe it's due to the fact that it is designed to be eaten with chopsticks alone. Chopsticks, like many things that are now considered Japanese, were originally introduced from China around the 6th century. They were initially used together with spoons by the ruling aristocrats, who did so <coughs> to avoid being thought of as unsophisticated barbarians by the Chinese people for eating with their hands. <coughs> but as the time passed, the spoons disappeared, and by 12th century, most Japanese people are eating with chopsticks. Other countries, Asian countries, such as China and Korea and Taiwan and Vietnam, also use chopsticks. But Japan is unique in not also using spoons. Eating chopsticks requires a level of manual dexterity and, and the food to be prepared and cut um, into smaller pieces by the cooks. Apart from obvious um, aesthetical elegance, eating chopsticks offer hidden health benefits. It actually slows you down, so reduce the amount you can actually eat. Chopsticks are <laughs> the secret weapon for the Weight Watchers. <laughs> now, Washoku as we recognize today is a culmination of Japan's long history, and although it is impossible to condense it into just a few paragraphs. Few key events stand out <coughs> and that shape the cuisine and reveals that the Japanese food is not as Japanese as it may originally look. Um, the first and arguably the most important <coughs> event, episode, in the history is arrival of the rice cultivation. It is largely uh, agreed that the rice was first domesticated in the, in the region of Yangtze River Valley in China, sometime between 8 and 13,000 years ago. But the date and the route the rice took to arrive in Japan is less clear. However, many would agree that the rice is not just a staple, but also shaped <coughs> Japan and its people. Even its commonly accepted national characteristics of being hardworking and diligent is largely due to the nature of the rice farming. Growing rice is labor-intensive um, labor and time-consuming. It is said that the kanji character, the one on top, um, <coughs> the rice, <coughs> incorporates figure of 88 can you see the sort of similarity? Um, as a rice plant needs to be attended 88 times before producing a single grain. Before the age of modern me mechanization, rice farming required community effort. At a key stage, families and villagers formed a production line and helped each other. The social unity and coercion that are once essential for the rice farming still remains a highly respected virtue, even in today's industrial society. And the first and the most important example, how the Japanese adopted a foreign origin food. Now, the second most important uh, event um, also came from abroad, an uh, introduction of Buddhism via China at the beginning of the 6th century. The arrival of Buddhism 
and its belief in not killing animals and birds for food meant that the Japanese people were forbidden to eat meat and poultry in 16, uh, 676 onwards. Um, th that was a time, a date, when the first imperial banning order was passed, and many more followed. But it is also largely understood that a uh, majority of the population ignore that. <laughs> And they just ate whatever you know they could find. And um, but as the Buddhism sort of spread <coughs> and and it got inseminated amongst ordinary people, um, the meat and the poultry disappeared from the table, and instead the fish and the beans became the main source of protein on the Japanese <coughs> diet. Um, Right, sorry. <coughs> Again, the In 794, the capital moved from Nara to Heiankyo, the present day Kyoto. But the move wasn't just geographical, but also the beginning of the thriving aristocracy. And the country slowly moved away from the direct influence of China and it began developing its own style in every aspect of Japanese life and culture including food. Um. <clears throat> Towards the end of Heian period, in the mid-12th century, power struggles between, uh, among the imperial family and the ruling Fujiwara clan led to the rise of martial element personified by the samurai. Once employed by the aristocracy as <coughs> humble palace guards, and samurai emerged as the new ruling class in the military capital of Kamakura in 1192. At around the same time, um, the austere Zen um, Buddhist sects also arrived from again from China, um, bringing Shojin Ryori. <coughs> Which is <coughs> a strict um, Buddhist vegan cu cuisine, and a tea was <coughs> reintroduced. The shojin yori <coughs> um, <coughs> features small portion of a wide variety of vegetables. <coughs> Although the cuisine was originally in, um, confined to within the Zen temple and was practiced as an integral part of religious training. It had wider influences over how the food, food was cooked, and namely simmering in broth. And, and it also led to the development of chakaiseki, um, a simple meal served before the tea ceremony, and later um, evolved to more elaborate multi-course um, cuisine called kaiseki ryori which you probably have heard of. The first samurai government um, in Kamakura lasted less than 100 years, and centuries of political instability followed until 1603, when the country was finally unified by the powerful Tokugawa clan, and a new uh, feudal government was set up in Edo, today's Tokyo. Peasant farmers made up nearly 80% of the population were placed in the second tier of social pecking order to ensure the stable rice and agricultural produces. <coughs> rice, however, was not just a mere staple, but it was an alternative currency, and that was used to measure every feudal lord's income from his domain. It is used it is this use of the grain as money in the background of almost constant shortages caused by the crop failures and the threat of devastating famines during the Edo period formed Japanese people's attitude towards rice as a soul of nation. The fear of Portuguese and Spanish colonial expansionism in Asia led to the Tokugawa shogunates to <coughs> ban Christianity and all foreigners were thrown out of the country, except the Chinese and Dutch, 
through, uh, um, <coughs> to trade through the port of Nagasaki in 1633. The two and a half centuries of Edo period is characterized by the um, political stability and economic growth, during which much of Japanese food, as we recognize today, was shaped, most, most notably, the noodles and sushi. The arrival of American black ships, they were called, led by the Commodore Perry in a small fishing port off, off the Bay of Tokyo in 1853 resulted in the downfall of Tokugawa regime and the beginning of modern Japan. Yes, um, this is a sort of rather, uh, it's a uh, wood print of this gentleman in the middle was considered more dandy really sort of um, um, in fashion. You know, he's noticed his hair, it's a sort of Western style, and the book he's reading <coughs> is a sort of Japanese translation of um, perhaps German um, philosophy book. And uh, the food he's eating is the forerunner of sukiyaki, he's eating beef, you know, so he was really a um, very fashionable man at the time. Um, anyway, in an attempt to quickly modernize the country, uh, the newly formed Meiji uh, government flung open the door to the world and started embracing all things from the West, including foods. For the first time in 1,200 years, the Japanese people were allowed to eat meat and poultry. And in fact, <coughs> um, they were pos um, pos um, <coughs> sorry. Um, positively encouraged to do so, uh, to be modern. You know. And um, the reopening of the foreign trade brought a wave of new food, such as cabbages and onions and tomatoes and apples and tangerines, and many <coughs> other um, fruit and vegetables, as well as new drinks like um, coffee and beer. Many dishes like sukiyaki and uh, yakitori and tonkatsu are the result of the Japanese adaptation and interpretation of newly introduced Western foods. My favorite uh, story of the period um, is Nick Jagger, and which is not to be mistaken as, a, um, as the Brit famous British rock star, um, but the quintessential Japanese home cooking of beef and um, potato. The story goes that um, the most admired Japanese naval officer, Admiral Togo, who was often compared with Horatio Nelson um, by defeat, uh, for defeating the Baltic fleet in uh, Russia, a uh, Russo-Japanese war in 1905, developed the taste for English food during many years he spent training with the Royal Navy. And his favorite was a beef stew. On his return, he ordered the naval chef to cook beef stew to feed, so he can um, feed his sailors with them. But the poor uh, naval chef, who had never eaten uh, beef stew, nor could get hold of the vital ingredients or chunky beef and, and uh, red wine, <laughs> had a little choice but to come up with his own interpretation based on Admiral's description. Uh, hence the Nick Jagger, the birth of it. And um, although uh, it's actually in my book, um, <coughs> it's, uh, the beef is very thinly sliced, you know, rather than sort of, um, sort of um, as you see it in this country. Anyway, now, in the boom and the bust um, years followed by the, um, followed the Second uh, World War, <coughs> Many purists predicted the decline of Japanese food culture, citing the electric rice cooker, instant cup noodles, instant miso soup, and instant dashi powders as the cause. Yet the numerous cookery book <coughs> and programs on, and, and the huge number of um, cookery books confirmed that the modern Japanese are still very much interested in in the preparation of good food at home. 
the desire to adopt outside influences to, to, suit, to suit the local taste have never waned and has produced such a unique fusion of Japanese and West, such as green tea ice cream, uh, seaweed flavored potato chips, wasabi coated dry peas, and cordura spaghetti. Having relinquished its proud second position in the world economic ranking to China, Japan's confidence has taken a knock, but at the same time <laughs> made the nation more humble and led to the reassessment of traditional values, including the way we eat, <coughs> and cook and eat. The food scene in, in Britain, especially in London, has never been more vibrant and are getting better still, including an in interest in Japanese food. Well, I hope this talk has helped you a little to demystify my country's food and cooking. And now what I would like you to do, uh, use my book and enjoy cooking and eating Japanese food at home with your family and friends. Thank you very much. Thank you.